As blacksmiths, we make a lot of bottle openers. The trouble is, there's never one around when you need it. They're way too easy to give away or way too easy for them to migrate to a different part of the house other than where you thought you left it the last time. So after spending several weeks on a set of andirons for our previous series of videos, I thought we'd go for a more simple, more basic video today and make a bottle opener that mounts to the wall that we won't lose quite so easily. If it's permanently attached to some place in the house or in the shop, you ought to know where it is. Now I got this cool cast iron bear head mounted on the wall. He's supposed to be a bottle opener, but his teeth have been so worn out over the years that it doesn't work for a bottle opener anymore. So let's make a nice hand forged one. The bear will stay because I think it's a cool iron casting. So to tackle this project today, I thought I would start with a piece of quarter inch by one inch flat bar. So that makes that what, about six millimeters by 25 millimeters. This is overly long. I know I'm not gonna need all this, but I think I'll go ahead and start with it so I can kind of proportion it out and get things just the way I want them. And this is going to be a fairly simple wall mounted bottle opener. It's not gonna be real fancy. I'm gonna have a flat place on the top and the bottom to mount to the wall and then come out at an angle and then back and down on the bottom side is where the bottle opener part will be. And that's gonna be fairly basic. It'll be essentially a ring style bottle opener, but instead of being on the end of the bar, it'll be in the middle of the bar. So let's get this hot. Hopefully all that makes sense by the time we're done. I'm going to start this with a slot punch and this will be upset and drifted out to be our round hole later. I'm going to start down a little further. I'd rather have to trim this after the fact than not leave enough material at this point. Like so many of our Hook of the Week videos, I'm kind of making this up as we go along. Trying to set the corners of the punch down just a little bit deeper. Make sure I can find my spot again. This is a fairly wide slot punch. Looking at it, I suspect a skinnier one probably would have been more appropriate. But I don't think it's going to hurt anything to start with a bigger hole. I'm going to go over the hardy hole from side to side here, so I alternately support where the material is on the anvil. I guess I'm going to have to get that hot again. I should have shared out by now. It doesn't seem to want to. Maybe just a little bit off here. A bolster like this would make life a little easier, but this one's just a hair undersized for this punch. It goes with a different punch, the one I should have used in the first place. So we're just going to keep going over the hardy hole like this. You could also go open the vise to just this space and use that, and that works pretty well. And if it wasn't for moving cameras, that's probably what I would do. And at some point in this project, we'll probably have to move a camera over to the vise, but we didn't have to yet. The slug is stuck to one side, so I'll just break that off. So now I'm going to upset this and open that up just a little bit and make it closer to round. Some people have asked about these slotted jaw tongs. We've done videos on them in the past, but they're essentially flat tongs of the slot. And that slot lets you hold flat material much more securely than you would just in regular flat jaw tongs. Now 
Now that I've let this cool off while I was talking, supporting it on the anvil works pretty well, but it's also pretty floppy, so you got to straighten it out a lot. But that's where the fact that these still work as flat dot tongs really comes in. Controlled heat with a torch wouldn't be a bad idea for upsetting this. Lots of ways you can do that. You can just go ahead and drift it at this point. I just think we'll get a better circle if we do this upsetting. I think I'll cool it off next time. That will help. But it isn't perfect. But even though that's a little bit frustrating because it moves around so much, you can see that that's opening up and is a little bit rounder and that's going to drift better as a result. My next step is going to be to start drifting this. And I'm going to start with just a round tapered punch. I want to check and see how far that goes into my Pritchell hole so I don't drive it in far enough to get it stuck. We'll stop with this one before that happens. At least that's my plan. It's about there. That goes a lot easier because we took the time to upset that a little bit. And then next we'll go to a much bigger drift. This one definitely doesn't fit in the Pritchell hole, but it will fit through the Hardy hole. This actually fits in this one inch Hardy adapter I've got, so that's a good place to start this process. It gives us more support to the ring of the bottle opener. If it cools down, you're not really doing much good drifting it, so you might as well heat it up again. And I'll turn it over so our Distortion alternates side to side there. There we have a nice round hole. It's fairly well centered. It's not perfect, but I don't think we're going to care too much about that. If you're worried about it, you put the drift back in and do some little adjustments. And I'm not even sure we need to adjust that for size very much. I think it's big enough that it's going to be able to catch a bottle top in there. So from here, I think what I want to do is this will be the bottom part that mounts to the bottom of the wall. And so it's going to need to have a bend and I'm going to thin it out and make it look a little bit more ornamental. And this piece will probably sit on the wall at about that angle so that you can put the bottle in there and pop it open. So the first thing here, I'm going to do some half face blows, thin that out. I don't think it needs to be a full quarter inch thick there. And that will give a good place to put a clean bend in to make this mount to the wall. Presently, there is no determination made which is going to be the front, and which is going to be the back. The shoulder will decide that. And I'm spreading it with a cross pane while I create that half face shoulder there. Make that shoulder a little bit more distinct. Notice I've got to drop my hand here 
It's because my anvil over time has developed a crown and it's not straight across. If your anvil is perfectly straight, you don't have to drop your hand like that. Now I picture this as just flaring out on both ends. If you've got something else in mind, take the time to make this end look like you want it to. You could also just cut it off and do a little upset end, which wouldn't look half bad. But this is what I see in my mind, so this is what I'm going for. Careful not to mess up your ring at this stage, but if you do, you can always redrift it. I'm saving the little tooth that grabs the bottle cap for the end just because we might have to redrift this. So that's it for that. And that's going to bend back away from the, the little offset. And that's what helps that whole thing lay flat and look smooth when we're done with it. So that'll bend back that way. This then will get a bend in here that will bend this way. And that'll be a, a pretty gentle bend, I think. And then we'll have another similar shoulder here that bends the other way. So I think I'm going to put the other shoulder up here. I think they both need to be on the same side. I might be envisioning this a little off, but I think I'm okay. I'm going to put that here, start flaring it, and then I'll cut it so it's the same length that this is. Like I say, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Need a bend there, a straight leg, so somewhere up about here. And that means I need to cut this off to make it match the other one right about here. It's all eyeballed. Do as much measuring and precision fitting as you want. But at the moment, I think I'm happy with what I've started. Here's another place you can really see how well these slotted jaw tongs work. I guess I should go into business making slotted jaw tongs. Luckily, Ken's Custom Iron sells a slotted jaw tong blank. And no, he didn't pay me to say that. one seems to be spreading out a little bit more so I'll kind of measure it and trim it to fit when I'm all done make sure they're about the same I do want that shoulder to be straight across remember in the final product this is the outer surface so I want to get my peen marks out of there and smooth it usually the part against the anvil is the outer surface so I'll just turn this up the anvil. I'm going to let this cool, then I'll do some measuring and I'll clean up these ends before I start doing the final work on this. All right, now my main concern is just that these look like they belong together. It certainly isn't critical. That one's two inches long. And again, make these whatever shape you want on yours if you're following along with this. I'm going to have to trim this off. It's a little bulge there and that corner's rounded, so it's going to end up a little bit narrower than it is now. So that'll end up about an inch and three quarters. So I want to trim this down to about that. Okay, how do we trim this then? We can... Certainly go to the big grinder. This thin metal like that, I can grind that. It'd just take me a, a minute, probably exactly, to grind all that off. But most of you don't have a big grinder. A little port a bandsaw and a stand like I've got. Make quick work of that. You can do it with an angle grinder. 
go ahead and do it with a chisel though because that's technology everybody should have available. I'm going to lay it out cold. That way we can find the mark again hot. Of course, that top section I may just go ahead and shear off cold. You can do all of this with a chisel cold if you want to. Hot's a little faster, but you've got to take the time to heat it. And we've looked at chisel cutting quite often in the past. I think it's a technique you should be comfortable with, even if you do have the grinder and the bandsaw and the angle grinder and whatever else. Because it is versatile and it'll get you in tight places if you have smaller curved chisels and things like that. So let's go to the vise and let's shear this off cold. Then we'll hot cut these just to show you how those different techniques might work. So to do this, I'm just going to put that in the vise right where my mark is at the top of the vise. And that is one side of my sheet metal shear. My chisel then is the other side of my sheet metal shear. That's rolling over a little bit. This old vise doesn't have the best jaws in the world. One problem with using vintage equipment. It also tweaks them off center a little bit. But that's a quick technique. And the little sharp corners we ended up with because it slipped at the beginning there were going to mostly disappear when I cut these edges off. So that's going to work out just fine. This cuts pretty quickly. It's a small piece. Now if I were working by myself and cutting this, I would probably do it with a handle hot cut under the treadle hammer. Or like I say, I'd grind it if I wasn't chiseling it. But One advantage to doing a chisel like this is it does leave a beveled edge. It will need to be filed and cleaned up, but it's at least starts off with a, a bevel there that you might really like on your finished piece. Now I am going to go ahead and grind that just to clean that rag up. You can fi file it cold or hot rasp it, whatever you'd like to do. Now as always, I think it's worth stopping and taking a look at what you've got. See if you see anything interesting for other projects in this. And when I see this shape with that hole, might make a very interesting tool handle for like a fireplace poker, shovel, something like that, but maybe done in half inch thick material instead of quarter inch thick material. I just think there's some potential there. Possibly an interesting door handle or a doorknob or something could go in the hole there. Lots of possibilities for this and it always pays to be thinking about future projects. And then you can expand on some of these things that you've started this way. So the next thing I want to do, I'm going to redrift the hole just to make sure it's round, but I don't want to make it much bigger because I'd hate for our bottle cap to fall all the way through. I'm going to start this with a little bit bigger drift, but I'm not going to go all the way through. This is just not going to fall through before I get to the round point. And this can also then be used as a way to kind of adjust some of this if it's not quite in the line right. I think we're probably good there. You need to take a round file and clean that up. It doesn't hurt. You put a little bevel on it if you want to. I think we look pretty good there. There's no sharp edges on it. Yeah, it looks like I let the camera run out the time there and I didn't catch putting this in there. Let you just use a ball punch and I put this on the top of this 
the ball punch you just drive that down in there and then slowly work to the edge until you get what you want drawn out into the ring there. But I put it on the top side so that when you open a bottle, you're bringing your bottle vertical and you're less likely to spill. If you put it on the bottom side, you have to open this way. And as you get the cap off, you're starting to pour out. So I think this is going to be a better solution. Anyways, now we're going to go back and we're going to bend this. This top one will bend over 90 degrees, so it's the easiest one to do, and we'll start there. Put a vice jaw spacer in here this time, that's better for your vice. Easy to forget though. And we'll just clean that up real quick at the edge of the anvil, make sure it's really 90. That's what I want there. And I'm going to put another offset bend right across here so that this rolls all the way around. So it's going to be way more than 90 in the long run. But we'll start at just a gentle 90. We're not going to try and forge it perfectly square. So I'm going to put that in there right about there to get this bend. Actually, this one short enough now I can put it right in the center of the vise. I don't need the vise jaw spacer. And you got to be really careful here not to mess up your first bin. getting there. I think I want to go a little bit further than that though. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that a little bit. Ultimately these angles will be somewhat defined by where these pads end out. So that's the next thing I'll do is I'll bend this pad out so that it's in line with this and then I just have to bend this until everything's flat with the wall. And I'm hoping that there's enough space to get that device at the shoulder there. Just barely. Good thing we haven't bent it all the way up yet. This one does not go to a full 90. It has to just be in the same plane as the lower one there. Go just a little bit more because it will straighten some as I refine all this. Okay, now right now those two heels hit, and it would be pretty simple to just flatten both of these off, so I need to look at my angles and decide, do I like one better than the other? I think I'm going to clean that straight bar up because it's got a little wobble in it before I make a decision. This stuff definitely gets a little bit weird to hold on to as you get to this kind of a phase of it. Anvil saddle is a handy tool for this. It's looking better. Now personally I still like the idea of this one being closer to 90 so I don't want to mess with that pad. So that means I need to bend this other arm down a little bit more still. So I've cooled this off a little bit. It's still going to be really a weird thing to try and get just the way I want it. That's a lot better. 
think we can flatten it out now. Now a lot of you are thinking, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. Well, next time I do one, if there's a next time, I probably will do it a little different. That guarantees it'll sit flat on the wall. Now I've got this bent and twisted now, which is too bad, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of straightening that way. Always a lot of fiddling on things with all these weird bends. So there could be a little back and forth at this point. Again, try not to squish the ring. Well, that did a lot of it right there. Because it's nearly impossible to drift that ring once you put that tab in there. Of course, it looks like I have messed up that tab going back and forth a little bit, so I'm going to have to try and get in there and fix that. I think that's a lot better. It's certainly straighter. So it's just that little tab we need to deal with, and it's going to be hard to get into. Let's see if I can get in there with a pair of smaller tongs and straighten it. It's at least getting it going back where I want it. It's not bad. It's got a little dish to it now, but I don't think that's going to hurt anything. In fact, it might actually be an improvement. Good. That was easier than I was afraid it'd be. I think I'm pretty much done with this part. I'm going to drill holes for mounting. And I think I'm going to put just a couple of file lines and a little filing across that top there. I think that just enhance it just a little bit. So I just think it'll look good with a little bit of filed bevel here, clean this surface up some, and then a couple of parallel lines. Nothing very fancy, just something to enhance it. Another good place to use your jaw spacer here. I think we can do all of this with this 10 inch half round file. You pretty much need to do half of this from one side, half from the other side, because you can't get in here where the vise is. I'm going to file some parallel lines. These could have been put in before we bent everything. But I think I would have messed them up, so I'm just going to file them in with the same half round file. Just like before, you'll have to finish it up on the opposite side of the vise. Depending on where you want to put your touch mark, if you're going to touch mark this, might already be too late, but I think down here is a good place for it. One last check to make sure it sits flat. Of course, after touch marking it, it doesn't. There we go. Okay. As this cools, I'll put my usual paste wax treatment on it. I think the filed in lines and that filed surface just really add to the way this looks. Well, that's it. Hopefully it will open a bottle. And of course, put it in with some nice screws that match. I think that's an important part of any project. And I'll use roundhead wood screws with this because I just did a whole bunch of these screws up. So that's all ready to go. But I suppose we need to try it out and see if it works. So I'm going to go hang this on the wall and then we'll find out what happens with it. It works. And no, you can't get coronavirus from drinking Corona beer. I actually read that people believe that. Anyways, that's a successful project. That was a fun little thing to do. I have never done a wall-mounted bottle opener like that. For the most part, I really like everything that we did with that. There might be a little bit different approach if I was 
going to do it again just to make things go a little bit smoother. Maybe even make some sort of a jig to get that bin just right in the top, but I'm not sure if it's worth the time to make a jig. This wasn't really all that hard to do. But seriously, if you want to prevent the coronavirus, make sure you wash your hands, especially after using a public restroom, because why wouldn't you? On the other hand, the only way you catch colds, flus, and other viruses is by being around people that have those viruses. So what do I always tell you at the end of the videos? Get out to your shop and make something? Well, the more time you spend in the shop and the more time you spend making things where there aren't other people around, the less likely you are to get sick. So blacksmithing is us doing our part for public health and safety. But seriously, I do hope everybody stays safe, stays healthy, and stays out of harm's way. And hopefully this thing won't be as big as some people say. Not only will I probably not quit drinking beer because of it, but I actually went out and bought Corona beer just because I heard that on the internet. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I really do hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and don't drink beer until you're done working for the day. And we will see you for the next one. Cheers.